Hey there, I've got a lot of stuff going on right now, but I have something I just need to get off my chest. So I've been studying this book that was recommended to me, and it's on algorithms, which is programming that is not my forte, but I really want to learn it. So in the uh, spirit of the BUILD acronym, Better Understanding Involves Learning and Doing, I am getting a better understanding of algorithms by forcing myself to get through this thing. And I've been reading a little bit each morning, and honestly, it's going a little bit slower than I would like, but I keep digging away at it, and when I come back to something and, and it starts to click, it's, it's really cool. But it reminded me of being back in third grade, and I vividly remember my third grade teacher giving the students, she would give us a math assignment right before recess. And she'd tell us, as soon as you finish this math assignment, uh, you can go out and start recess. And it's like, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. But I remember it was like a one page thing of, of problems. And I'd get maybe halfway through and a bunch of the class had already left. And I'd get down to maybe the bottom row and look around. And I was the only kid left in the class. It was just me and the teacher and the rest of these problems. And that's fine, but it was not an isolated incident. It was like every time. And she would do this multiple days a week. We'd have math before recess. And like every time, I was the last kid in the class by far doing my problems. And as a third grader, what was I supposed to think other than there must be something wrong with me? Now, let's just conclude for a second that I'm slow. Let's just say that's true. How much does that matter in the real world? Now, if you're working bagging groceries like I was my first job in high school, uh, yeah, it's really important that you're able to do that quickly. You've got customers backing up and you want to be able to get them through. You don't want to keep them waiting. Uh, let's say you work in manufacturing like I do now and you're somebody that's doing assembly. Yeah, it's important that you're able to do that quickly because the more you can do, the more money is made for the employer and they can afford to pay you. It's, it's really important that you're quick at doing things like that. But if you're in a support role or a technician or even a supervisor or some kind of problem solving role, what difference does it make that you take 15 minutes instead of 10 to solve a problem? As an employer, if you have the option to hire person A or person B and person A rushes and gives you the first answer that they can get their hands on and then person B takes everything into account and sits back and says, okay, let's, let's consider this again before giving you the an answer to make sure that, they're, that there isn't anything that they're missing, I might want person B so that I know that we're, you know, there's less chance that we're making a mistake. Yeah, I've heard the saying that even a, a timely wrong direction is better than no direction at all, but when you're chasing the wrong direction, man, that can have consequences that are measured in months and years. So I'm kind of an advocate for taking that little bit of extra time to get that answer. Now, getting back to the classroom, I support what the teacher was doing. I mean, that's, it's, it's a great idea. I do that with my kids where I say, okay, look, yes, you can go play after you get your chores done, but it comes with a lot of coaching where, okay, look, this is what a sloppy job looks like, and this is what a quality job looks like, and depending on the circumstances, you need to be, you know, you need, always need to do a good job, but sometimes, yeah, take the extra effort and make a super high quality job, depending, again, depending on the circumstances and how much time you have. What they never have happen is getting penalized for doing quality work which is what I feel like was happening to me in the classroom where I had been taught to make all of my numbers as neat as I possibly could and I had been had a perfectionist mindset I kind of still do that I didn't want to get any problems you know X's through and that I got them wrong so I was checking my work and okay is this correct before I would move on to the next one now it hurt to feel like there was something wrong with me uh, and we can have a philosophical argument about kids and making them feel bad about, our, about themselves. 
but that bad feeling drove me like, okay, am I going to wallow in my own sorrow or am I going to try to do something about it? And fortunately, I was one of the kids that chose to do something about it. And I worked harder and tried, okay, what can I do to be faster without making scribbles? The other thing I didn't realize is that a lot of those kids that were just, boom, done with their homework and out, they were doing what we call pencil whipping their assignment. They were told if they finished, basically had a mark next to each of the problems, that they could go to recess. And if you're living in the now and only care about the short term, then that's what you're going to do. Who cares if I get a bad grade? I'll worry about that tomorrow when the teacher finds out about it. I didn't know that, but they did, and that's what they were doing. Now, as the other students were getting coaching on here's how you can do a better job, they started to, some of them started to take longer on that assignment. And as I got a little faster, slowly I wasn't the last kid in the room anymore. I wasn't the first kid to leave the room at all, but I eventually climbed the ladder a little bit and there might be one or two kids still in there when I left and I had that sense of accomplishment. So that was great. Now I wanted to get this out there because I know a number of you are probably not the fastest at doing math and that sometimes you might be worried that it means that there's something wrong with you or you're just not cutting it. Uh, so anytime you're feeling that way, just think of me, the kid who was the last to finish his math assignment and now today teaches engineering on his own YouTube channel. Now, shifting gears, you're watching this on the smaller of my two YouTube channels. Of course, there's the big uh, Quint Builds channel with almost half a million subscribers at this point. And this is Build 2, or I've only got like 10,000 subscribers. And the Build 2 doesn't make any money. It isn't even qualified for ad revenue yet. So I'm making this video completely free. Uh, I, I don't even charge my patrons for it. And, and that's fine. I'm not doing this for the money, clearly. In fact, the latest video that I published on my bigger channel was on pneumatics, and I knew it would not be as popular with an audience that was following me because of these energy projects involving hydro and wind and all that that are, that are super popular. Uh, but I really wanted to do a video on pneumatics and electronics because it's super freaking cool. And I went ahead and did that video, and after almost a month of being out there, it's made a grand total of like 130-something bucks. And yeah, that sounds like a lot of money until you consider that, uh, shoot, I'm paying like $500 a year for the CAD software. I'm paying like $249 a year for the editing software. I pay about 200 bucks a year for the website. And I just spent over $5,000 on a state-of-the-art 3D printer for making future videos. So that's pretty much like all of my year's Patreon contributions <laughs> eaten up in one purchase. And again, that's fine. I'm not, do again, I'm not doing this for the money. Uh, but if you appreciate videos like this one where you're getting some of this coaching that you're not gonna see anywhere else and the types of videos that I'm doing and you wanna see that stuff continue, uh, you know, I would really appreciate uh, looking, taking a look at the Patreon page and maybe throwing a few bucks that way. This video is gonna get thousands of views, and if only one out of 10 of the viewers decided to throw two or three bucks at Patreon, it would more than double the monthly contributions that I'm getting. But hey, if you can't afford it, if you're, you know, I, I spent most of my life pinching pennies to be able to be able to build the things I wanted to. That's why I'm such a pack rat. I never throw anything away because I don't want to have to purchase anything uh, to do a project. I want to be able to just dig into a bin and pull that stuff out. So uh, yeah, pinching pennies sucks. If you're at that state where you, you can't afford a few bucks, please don't donate to the channel. But if you can't afford it, please do because you can imagine uh, with all the stuff I've done so far, how much more we could do with a bigger collection of patrons donating to the channel. Going back to that kid in the classroom who was the last to finish his homework and was concerned about it, that there might be something wrong with him, don't ever give up. Always keep learning like I am, like I'm pushing myself through this book to be able to learn more. 
Uh, always try to be better, faster at what you're doing no matter where you're at. And don't worry so much about it if you're not the fastest at whatever it is that you're trying to do. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.